Hey, it's the show dedicated to talking about the coolest crowdsourcing projects. Every episode, we interview amazing creators and showcase their awesome work. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and it's kicking it with the Mythwits. I am joined by my co-host, Michael Kafis. Flash Gordon rocks. Flash Gordon! <laughs> Gordon's alive! <laughs> and on this episode of Kicking It with the Mythwids, we are talking with Sean Patrick Fannin. Hey, Sean. How's it going, everybody? Good to see you again. Good to see good, you again. Good to see you. Welcome uh, Sean, back, Sean. Yeah, Sean has, professionally, has been professionally involved in tabletop, RPGs, computer games, and entertainment for over a quarter century. His projects have included Hero Games Champion product line, both West End and Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPGs, various World of Darkness books, the Savage World's epic high fantasy setting, Shanatar, and Savage Rifts for Pinnacle Entertainment Group uh, for Evil Beagle Games. However, today, today, we are focusing on his newest project, Freedom Squadron, a Savage World setting. Yes. So, Sean, welcome to Kicking It with the Mythwitch. You are our first Kicking It guest. Uh, wow. We, we, yeah, yeah, we we peeled this off because we, we did a lot of did a lot of Kickstarters for people, or not for them. We we promoted a lot of Kickstarters, uh, and then we, we decided that um, we we like doing it, but uh, we thought it'd be great if we could do uh, if we could do a separate show. Kind of, I mean, it's a, it's still you know in the same vein of what we do, but more focused on what you guys are doing because you know so many great creators create so many great products. Um, and, and this is a good one. This is, this is really cool. Dude, when I saw this, uh, I was just like, yes, nobody is, there's no, um, there's, there's nothing quite like this out there at the moment. This is fantastic. Well, I appreciate that very much. First off, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you guys are doing this. This is a great idea. Uh, you know, Kickstarter completely changed the tabletop RPG industry and, uh, it's become, a way for us to really get some great things done cooperating with the fans. And in some cases, as we're doing with this particular Kickstarter with retailers in some new and innovative ways. So when, when folks like you who have such a great audience and such a great pro, pro, program are willing to help us get the word out, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you guys. And I'm honored to be your first guest. Oh, sweet. Thanks. Good, good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, I think it was, Mike, what was it? It was, it was last year at the end of the year, we were like, man, we do a lot of Kickstarter shows. Maybe we should just, do a Kickstarter show as a side project. Yes, and and we didn't want to um, flood the a person's Kickstarter promotion with a lot of our antics, which we love antics, but we <laughs> wanted to make it more serious for yeah. that aspect. Uh, and, the antics are fun. I was on there when we talked about Savage Rifts last year or a couple of years ago, I guess now. Yeah. I, don't know. I lost track of time, but we had a great time. I'm looking forward exactly. to being on with you guys on Monday. As a matter and of yeah, that's going to yeah, be yeah. a thing. We're going to have fun. And that's where we're going to have all of our tomfoolery and our um, shenanigans. Shenanigans, Gordney. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't, right. don't, uh, don't bury right. the lead. Well, hey, let's All let's right. stay on let's stay on point. So, Sean, right. you've got you've got uh, you've got your project here. You got a uh, Freedom Squadron, and uh, as of this recording, as as of this moment, I'm not looking at. Wait, hold on, let me look at it right this second because the number might have changed since I looked at it last. You are at uh, twenty. Oh, it did change twenty thousand. We hit the twenty. Twenty-four dollars, uh, three hundred and thirty-six backers with on, with with still not only with still twenty-four days to go. So that's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's a good place to be. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Now, this is uh, this is it's a long you know campaign against Venom and a long campaign to build up the resources, and uh, we've got some really cool stretch goals that we're hoping yeah. to hit. Of course, all Kickstarters are like that. So, right. it's, but it's looking good. It's looking really good. But this is the kind of uh, project that deserves um, completed stretch goals so i'm really happy for you guys thank you thank you very much so like, explain to, for anyone who is not familiar what are we so happy about what is uh, exactly what are we doing here i mean yes savage worlds and we've you know what have you brought to savage worlds that is making this an entirely new and innovative game well i mean be fa to be fair way back in the very first days of savage worlds there was a team of people who did something called strike force 7 which was very much a similar kind of love letter to 80s action real american style hero types right mm -hmm. and um please don't sue us hasbro so anyway uh <laughs> <laughs> so this is you know I, I gotta be fair right there's been a few attempts, but you know at this point what we're looking at here is years later 
with all the stuff that I've learned and all the stuff that I, I developed for Savage Rifts, for example, doing the concept of frameworks that can kind of give you cool packages of abilities and kind of elevating the power level to a degree to make them very top end heroes with cool abilities and cool specializations and such. Uh, that's what we're dealing with is very much a, a, a modernized, modern viewpoint through the lens of nostalgia back to that really cool stuff that we enjoyed back in the 80s and 90s with the cartoons and the comics and the toys and the colorful uniforms and the crazy over the top villains and the you know paramilitary action adventure without the drudgery of you know real military stuff so uh it's 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 very much that it's it's a uh, it's set in a future a post a post world war 3 kind of thing uh, but you've, you've got these cool codename characters and they don't have to necessarily even be soldiers. They can be special agents and first responders and athletes. And even remember a guy who was a very, very large football player for the Chicago bears who became a particular action figure, for example, um, you know, fridge. So anyway, uh, we, you could do something like that. Of course, ninjas, and it doesn't have to be Japanese ninja. It could be ninjas from anywhere, like Greek ninjas and Irish ninjas and whoever knows. So all that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, blows it out the water kind of fun stuff to be these cool code name characters doing crazy awesome missions and it can range anywhere from sort of nitty gritty uh you know uh, uh political thriller kind of stuff right up to the completely over the top oh my god there's a giant monster that just came out from the world below somebody get me a rocket launcher it could be all of those kinds of things that's freedom squadron Awesome. Awesome. And so, so Freedom Squadron is, they go up against, they go up against Venom and uh, Venom. That, that's, I love it. And Venom is, uh, looks like a scorpion themed, which is cool. Um, well, so scorpion, lizard, uh, serpent, uh, all those kinds of creepy crawly monsters all wrapped up into one kind of thing. Oh, 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 nice. Okay. So, so how long has Venom been working its plans? How long has it been behind the scenes with a, it's funny you ask that because I'm actually here. This is going to blow you. This is a little thing. They'll twist your noodle. I'm just now talking to a, a Colonel who teaches at the air force Academy. I live in Denver. Of course, air, air force Academy is down in Colorado Springs. I'm actually going down there uh, in April to do a, an official talk to his class. And we were talking about my future history fictional timeline where I completely rewrite some of our ancient history all the way through all the political stuff and up oh, okay. into the, the 2050s and kind of redo it with this conspiracy angle of where Venom's been in the background twisting everything. So the late 1800s is where you first see agents of Venom twisting and turning and causing financial collapses and, and uh, you know, political machinations in China and across the world all the way up through collapsing the subprime market uh, in the 2000s, you know, 10s. Uh, mm. causing a certain great recession that we all recently remember, you know, oh, and, yeah. so I get to blame that on Venom, right? So that's the kind of stuff that we've been playing with. So they've been back in the background since the, since the 19th century. Oh, you know, I smell some future, uh, some future work that they could be written, you know, like a oh, yeah. late 1800s Victorian. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of fun stuff that you can play with this, and 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 you know we we have plans for this to be a much larger, broader uh, package of stuff that deals with uh, well, you know, like we mentioned this earlier, we talked about off the off thing. Project Awesome is really all about taking all the cool ideas that came out, and all those things that were kind of suggested, even you know, that could fit into that '80s '90s action adventure, but again, kind of modernized and and maybe scrape some of the cheese out and make it a little bit more palatable uh and more cool and that's kind of the thing that we're looking for i like the cheese yes yeah. to a degree <laughs> to a degree, right but less limburger and more really good sharp cheddar uh, like good okay. sharp cheddar <laughs> excellent all right um so so i know you know looking at the art the, the art that i see um yep. It looks very similar to the some the, the riffs artwork. Uh, is it the same artist, or is it just nope. uh, somebody nope, nope, does nope. the same similar style? Well, not really. I, it's been interesting. I just I get really lucky getting to work with great artists. But the story here is actually that that art was originally most of that art was originally contracted by the Spyglass Games guys. They're my partners in this. Spyglass okay. Games did a board game. Uh, it's a cooperative deck building board game with a dice mechanic, which is kind of crazy. But oh my god, it is a great game called Venom Assault. And I sat down with them at a convention about three years ago now uh, and played this game, fell completely love, saw the art. My friend Dave Forby was the one that said, you know, I think this stuff would be great as a Savage World setting. Uh, and I talked to the president uh, of, of Spyglass, Jeff Arbo, and his partner, Michael Knight. Yes, and I'm not kidding, Michael Knight. Nice. And everybody, asked, everybody asked him about the car. Um, 
He's in the chat room. Uh, so, uh, so hey, Michael. How, you know, so it, 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 Michael and I have been world building partners on this because he, he originally came up with all the background stuff, and then I've been working with him to, to pull that together. And um, uh, he, uh, I sat down with him, and I, like, really, it, it took five minutes conversation to go. Oh my God, yes, we want to do this. And the art, by the way, is primarily by a guy named Phil Cho. Now, Phil Cho is a freaking superstar. He is an established artist with both Marvel and DC Comics. Nice. Uh, if you check out his, if you check out his website, check out his stuff, you'll see all kinds of amazing stuff that he's doing there. We are incredibly fortunate that he's excited about Freedom Squadron, and he's he's done all the covers for us. We have these these amazing covers that he's done for us. We have some a, a, a roster of other artists who can work in the same sort of style, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been sort of cultivating those relationships because Phil can only do so much at a time because well he's writing he's doing art for Marvel and DC, so you know. But he's uh, he's on board, and in fact, one of our stretch goals, one of our very high level stretch goals, is to bring him in for some e even more art uh, down the road. So that's that's kind of a thing that we're hoping for. But he does this incredible style, which is again kind of looking back at the stuff that they did for the Marvel comics, and maybe some of the great uh, art for the boxes and 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 cards for when the, the all of the kinds try to kind of call back to that. But again, bringing it forward to a slightly more modern sensibility and really just pumping it up and giving it a lot more you know, Powell kind of stuff. So he's, it's just been a thrill. And honestly, it was one of the reasons why I said I have to do this because for crying out loud, I'll have access to all this amazing art right from the start. Right. <laughs> so that was, that was, a, that was a reason to do it, but it's very inspirational and uh, it just, it gets everybody so jazzed up, including me. And and that's and that's the art. So is that the artwork you sent me to to cycle through while we talk? Sure, sure. I okay. sent you a ton of that stuff. Now there may be a, so, there may be a couple of pieces that were done by some other guys, but almost all of that is Phil. All right, the cover so, pieces, all the cover pieces, like the Commandos Manual cover piece, it has the oh my god battle going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all Phil. Okay, cool. That's one. Actually, that's showing right this second. But that's those are the ones that are cycling through. So if you guys want yeah. to see what we're talking about, that's it's right, right. It's uh, let me see. Is it, let me do this. I think it's right there. Yeah. So anyway, and, and, the, and the cool thing is, uh, one of the pieces I think I sent you. I hope I sent you. Is uh, it, there's a guy. He's basically in a black trench coat, and he's got a uh, pistol, and he's shooting. Yes. It looks like a zombie in the face. That was a special gift that uh that the, the 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 spyglass guys did for me they they said you know what we were so grateful to you for sorry i'm gonna mute that because i actually want to see the chat room i'm gonna mute that so i don't talking over myself okay. um <laughs> but um but the the, the the there's a piece that he, they, they did so that's my character that's one of my characters they actually were right. like would you like to have a character in the venom assault board game and actually, I, I forgot to get that out. I wonder if I can find that real quick because that'll be real fun. So pardon me while I look away from the screen right. while I'm digging that's, around for something real quick. That's um, fine. But uh, uh, you know what? I don't think I'm going to build. Oh, crap. I'm not going to build fine. I'm not going to build. But anyway, there's a, <laughs> that image is for that. It's an actual promo card that you can only get from me if, you're, if you beat me at a convention or whatever. And it can go into your Venom Assault board game. And it is the it is Codename Walker, uh, Nick Civil Wolf. And he is uh the occult operation specialist for freedom squadron because we have magic we have psionics we have crazy monsters we have strange dna we have robotrons and crazy uh you know extraterrestrial stuff so it's it's all in there and nick is the nick civil wolf uh look, there's look behind you look behind you sean yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. seriously no look behind you oh hey. <laughs> you have a helper <laughs> that's, fantastic that's, that's, that's actually corinne seabolt who is our um our uh, editor in chief and my Sweet. belovedest, but yeah, there's the there's the Nick Silver Wolf card right there, and uh, so this is the promo card for your Freedom Squadron board game. But he's also going to be in the RPG. That's a, a lot of things that we're having a lot of fun with. Actually, is stuff from the board game goes into the RPG setting, but all the stuff that I've been creating in addition to what was in the board game, they're pulling back into the next supplement for the board game. So that we I mean, for RPG to the board game. So. Uh, bad guys have created and and actually the other thing that the beret I'm wearing has become a trademark of a character I created for when I'm running convention games called Codename Big Irish, which is also sort of my nickname in the industry. And he's a navy, he's an Irish naval captain who got recruited into Freedom Squadron, and there's a whole history about him in the, in in there. But anyway, so I've I've done the cosplay multiple times. These guys were collecting pictures of him. They're actually going to have a 
they're going to do a version of him for the board game as well. Oh, nice. So, nice. And I just found that out actually at Andercon. So yeah, it's, it's, so there's a lot of back and forth uh, between that. And that's been a lot of fun. And having Phil Cho do that image was one of the coolest things in my life. Having my favorite character that I've played in multiple Savage and other game settings as, uh, and are looking at it right now, as a matter of fact, and uh, I've just, that was one of the greatest gifts of my life right there. So a big shout out to you, Michael and Jeff, again, I'm just still so grateful to have that cool picture. So Fantastic. it definitely, definitely sounds like you're doing a lot of extra um, uh, promotional um, backing uh, around this Kickstarter. Can you go into some of the other things you're doing, uh, like uh, what you're doing on Twitter and some of the um, fun you're having with that? Okay. So uh, we, we, you guys know you said 25 years actually we figured out i've actually been doing this for 30 years now oh. and so i was i was i came into this thing just as kickstarter was like yeah you know, we figured out how to do kickstarter and made all the mistakes <laughs> which is why i'm not running this kickstarter i'm letting other people run this kickstarter that was the first thing i learned is don't run a kickstarter let other people do it uh and it's actually uh the spyglass games guys that are, are handling it and they're freaking amazing I, I almost don't want to get them in trouble here but if you are looking for a team of people to help you with the kickstarter reach out to them because they're really good at this um so well, I, a lot of the things that I, I wanted to do was to take some of my ideas from other arenas and sort of figure out a way to, to twist that into how we could turn that into, use that to promote and create buzz and create excitement. So my community building skills, I'm really good at getting groups of people who, who play a game with me and get excited about their characters and excited about the story and turn that into a, a, a body of people who become supporters and become people who are willing to help me get the word out and participate. So this evolved into something we call the Global Operations for uh, Global Global Operations Force, Freedom Squadron Global Operations Force, which is an in-game concept. It's like the army that built out around the original squadron is called the GOF. And we turned that into a fan club, which is like a combination social fan club, cosplay club, which was an interesting evolution that thanks to Donovan Santini and a few others, it just sort of evolved even beyond what I imagined and a shared narrative experience approach. So I took my original ideas from Shine Tar back in the day, which was actually a shared campaign kind of thing, moved that around a little bit to focus more and uh, shout out, thank you, Al Bear, for, you know, that eventually drilled down in my head, Al, and I got the point. Instead of trying to do controlled, you must run these modules and you must run with this and, and this controlled and you must tell everybody what you're doing. We just set it loose and said, you're just, GMs go run your games, players play your characters, bring your characters to conventions, bring your characters to other people's tables, and then they, 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 they all interchange, no problem at all, and share your stories via all the media that we have, which includes the Facebook group. We're going to have a website. Uh, we're working on that right now in the background. Again, I've got people. I can't believe I have people, but I have people, and they're doing that. Uh, and as you mentioned, the Twitter feed, that's another place this is happening, where people are taking their codename characters, and they've created their own special Twitter account for those codename characters. And in character, they're doing Twitter posts constantly, daily, all day long, every day. Uh, I mean, I can't even keep up with them. I, I'm, I've actually got the Twitter account for General Steel, who's like the top character in the thing. And occasionally I'll just put a little thing out. But I mean, there's Diode, Malware, Iron, Suture, Shocker, Vike. I mean, there's like, I think there's a dozen, we're probably pushing two dozen characters now that are all doing these shared narrative you know, real-time stories alongside the WNN, Worldwide News Network, which is kind of our CNN of the of the fiction world, that's doing news posts and entertainment news and advertisements and all kinds of crazy stuff. My God. All of the, well, yeah, so it's nuts, right? And it, it yeah. sounds like the Worldwide News Network is sort of the connective tissue that's bringing yes. all these characters together, right? Yes. So if you wow. follow, if you look at hashtag Freedom Squadron RPG, you'll find all the stuff. There's also the the Bitly link, which is Bitly basically Freedom Rings. Uh, if you hit that HTTP bit dot ly forward slash Freedom Rings, you can track all of the the Twitter feed stuff that way. And if you want to create a character, you know, give yourself a code name, get in there, use the hashtag uh, Freedom Squadron RPG. Boom! Suddenly, people are going to start role playing with you. And and anybody's welcome to do that. Just jump in and have a good time. Yeah. It. If anyone wants to know, if you want to know anything about Freedom Squadron, hashtag Freedom Squadron is the way to go, and that will lead you to at uh, fs underscore wnn. Um, right. And those are the most fun 
To be clear, you want to use Freedom Squadron RPG. There, it turns out there's also a mobile game called Freedom Squadron. So if you just do Freedom Squadron, you uh, may run into a bunch of stuff that has okay. to do with it's like airplane-based uh, mobile game. So that's where we're focusing on Freedom Squadron okay. RPG. Now, credit where credit's due. Torg, when they did their big relaunch thing, when they did their Kickstarter, they had a feed that was just a single feed, and they were doing this really cool storyline, stories from when the rifts were opening up, uh, the, the storm bridges were coming across, uh, the rail or the you know, the bridges and all that. So they were doing this single feed of fictional news reports and blogger reports, and I totally ripped that off. But I took it and like blew it up into something else. And then, quite frankly, my friends and fans took it and blew it up into something I'd never even anticipated. So we took a great idea and we turned it into something even bigger, and that's been really exciting. Wow. Well, jeez, that is a lot. That's, that is actually really cool. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun just outside of like the actual designing and everything. It's neat to see all these people doing stuff. Um, you know, like I, years ago, I did a, uh, I, I did a book for a uh, fusion. I did a, a plug, a free, free book for fusion. And I actually had a couple people do stuff with that. Cause it was sort of like a generation plug. And it was so cool to see other people doing stuff with my stuff. So it was, it was just, it was a lot of fun. I, I was just I was checking to see what the latest is on this, and uh, what I forgot one of the things that's just recently happened is that um, Venom has temporarily taken over the Worldwide News Network and rebranded it as the Venom News Network. Oh God! And um, <laughs> right now we, we so the VNN has just 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 tweeted Freedom Squadron insurgents threaten safety led by General quote Steel. These criminals are seeking to undermine the safety and stability of all people. Report any activity you see today. Be a good neighbor, and Venom will reward your service. So, <laughs> nice. so Venom has taken over the worldwide news network. I apologize. I, I know that bidding is happening. I got to get off the uh, free, off the uh, the Facebook page because uh, <laughs> I'm getting the I'm got I've got people like trying to ping me while I'm on here, and I just, I can't. Funny. I cannot multitask like that. So you guys are going to tell me if there's something that's going on in the chat room that I, I yep. need to, to respond to. Yeah, no, just, that's fine. I'm just going to focus over here. But uh, yeah, and I mentioned the cosplay thing. I got to tell you guys this. This is amazing. I, I, I we, we recommend, see, the cool thing about this is the cosplay really works. All you need to do is go to an Army Navy store or sporting goods store or wherever and get some cool bits and put it on and some pseudo military looking stuff or whatever mm -hmm. works for you. Boom. You have a cosplay. Yep. So because of that, and a lot of people went all in on this, by the way, you like motocross armor and helmets right. and really yeah. neat stuff. And then I've got uh, Chelsea uh, Winslow, who is our code name, Jade Phoenix. And she's like this very uh, black widow esque kind of special agent. And she was actually our hostess during our total escape games broadcast during our, our launch. Um, so all these people are in cosplay. And uh, we even had a professional cosplayer come in and do one of the Venom characters, Hex, uh, although she then decided to sit down and actually play the game and then created her own hero character, uh, which I just thought was awesome. So we had more cosplay during our big event at, at Genghis Khan than the costume contest had. Nice. That was crazy to me. <laughs> but it's just, so we're a cosplay crew as well. I mean, all this is in play before the Freedom, before the Kickstarter even <laughs> launched. Right. So, so you buy into this Kickstarter, you're not just buying a product that you will get, you're actually buying into a community. There's a, there's a community already ingrained, mm -hmm. um, that, that extends beyond the role playing at completely, uh, is beyond it. Yes. Uh, it's a huge community. Uh, it, no, granted there's a lot going on here in Denver cause that's where I am and I've got a, a crew here, but it's expanding. There's a whole New York contingent that is starting to get into cosplay. And as a matter of fact, they're, they're planning a huge thing. Cause I'm going to be at in I'm going to actually be in Atlantic city for a convention uh, later this year. And they're already planning a huge event at, at, around that. There's people in Atlanta. There's people just all over. Heck, uh, we got a friend of ours uh, in Italy, Gilbert Gallo. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Who's uh, codenamed Maverick. And uh, he's, he's all up in it and getting people excited about that too. So it's just, if you check out uh, freedom squadron, global operations force on, on Facebook, uh, I'm actually going to kick you guys a link here real quick uh, of some cool photos that uh, that's I just put it in your guys chat room there. But uh, that's some photos from Genghis Khan is showing all the people in cosplay and playing the games and stuff. So, oh, cool. Fantastic. All right. So, um, you know, it, you're not doing this all by yourself. Uh, who, who are some of these other people? So you're the lead writer. But who, who are some of your collaborators? Like who are some of these people that you're working with? 
Well, we mentioned Michael Knight, um, uh, car not included. Uh, he is the original world builder for Venom Assault, and he and I have been partnering. And basically, he's just been an incredibly gracious. You know, uh, I, I did. He gave me all these notes, everything like that, and then I just kind of went nuts with it. And he's just been like, "Oh my god, this is so awesome!" And it's really kind of fun to work with somebody who just like, like says, "All the things you're doing in my world, I love it. Keep going." <laughs> and that's so that's that's been fun. But it's all based on his original cool ideas. Jeff Arbo who is the president of Spyglass Games. He is the number cruncher guy. This guy is absolutely, he's practically like, his superpower is like an actuary or something. I don't know. He's just amazing at looking at the numbers and running it and, and understanding the business side while also being an excellent game designer and an excellent, uh, he's also a great role player too. I, I don't get to game with him anywhere enough, but he's really sort of in the background. He's sort of an unsung hero because he's making sure all of this will work that uh, we're hitting the numbers the way we need to. He's the one giving me the assurances when I'm saying, you know, why don't we have $200,000 right now? Oh God, oh God. And he's like, no, no, we're great. This is fine. You're fine. Calm down. Mm -hmm. um, I've had uh, Ray Brules uh, and Juliet Meyer. They're also uh, locals. I've known both of them for many, many years. She is our media consultant and is just freaking brilliant. Codename Big Show. And I'm not kidding. Her character is designed as a public information ninja. <laughs> so... She's she's like out there in front, but then she disappears and goes and kicks bad guys' butts, and then comes back out and takes you know takes care of the public information stuff. But she has set us up with a media plan and all of the 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 you know the links and and how to track our performance across different things and all the amazing videos. There's if you go to YouTube and look up uh, WNN Freedom Squadron RPG on YouTube, we have a channel, and there's a ton of videos up there. I'm I can I've never seen a Kickstarter with this many videos already before at a time and and she did all of them she she produced all of those videos it's fun uh, stuff i've i checked that out too uh, I, and I she highly suggest it she and ray did most of the voice acting although we also have uh chas kemp who's a well-known illustrator who's done some work for uh, evil beagle but he's also a voice actor and he did voice acting on one of our our cool videos as well um uh, and ray brules he is uh he is another sort of unsung hero although i keep trying to make sure i sing his praises he's going to be doing one of the um or he's actually going to be doing a series of three one sheets for us but he's also he did all the scripting for those videos and and for a lot of the voiceover stuff uh he's been he's the guy who's leading the wnn twitter feed he's also been coordinating all of the people doing their the twitter and other fictional uh, presentations uh, across the different uh, venues and stuff like that. That's all been him in the background. And quite frankly, he's just been the guy uh, who stepped up uh, alongside Corey uh, Williamson, another uh, really great guy that, you know, those two have been working together to keep the global operations force fans organized and doing all the cool stuff. I mean, they, for example, we were not planning uh, a separate launch party kind of thing. I was in, I was in Atlanta at Andocon and that was going to be, you know, me and Michael with a bunch of people doing the launch party. And the, out of nowhere, the whole crew here in Denver, led by Ray, led by Corey, you know, then with Chelsea and Chris Parks and all these other people stepped up and said, nope, we're going to do a party here too. And they were like three or five, they was like three tables and everybody in costume and they did a live stream as well. And again, I, did, I didn't do anything with that. They just said, we're going to do this for you. So Ray Brules, Juliet Meyer, Corey Williamson, uh, Donovan Santini is uh, our executive producer because he believed in this thing so much. He actually directly invested and making sure we had the money that we needed for a lot of our advanced needs, like our banners and our initial videos and stuff like that. Uh, Plus, he's also our cosplay coordinator because that's an area that he's really involved in. So, uh, you know, he's our, our, you know, my housemate and a really, really great guy. Um, and it's just an, an amazing uh, job there. So, and then Corinne Seabolt, who was the one snuck in behind us, handing me the card. Right. Uh, she's our she's our editor in chief. She's also codenamed Surgical Strike. One of the covers actually has this woman in like you know purple uh, combat smocks with uh with with healing grenades and like a, a scar on her face that's her character who is basically a demolitions expert field surgeon and no i'm not kidding that's the kind of character you could make in this game <laughs> <laughs> i will blow them up but i will fix your blow-ups so, yeah all right, so cool that's that's the kind of stuff that's going on and so it's like i said and i'm, and I'm sure i'm missing someone and i apologize if i am there's just an amazing group of people that uh, have all just gotten involved in this thing and, and helped make it happen so all right. Well, hey, let's talk about let's talk about the the rules. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. And let's Mike. Yeah, and I'm I'm getting ready to pull it up. Give me okay. one sec. All right. Well, I was gonna I was gonna talk about yeah, just yeah. some of the some of the game mechanic -y nuts yeah. and bolts and stuff. Definitely. All right. So you have the uh, you have the this this now this is 
uh, pretty uh, um, interesting. I've, a lot of people have talked about this. Apparently, a lot of people are really excited about this. Your plans and operation rules for for uh, integrations. Let's, let's tell me about tell me about the coolness of that. So this may be the most important thing that I've ever designed in my entire 30 plus years as a game designer. I am not even kidding. I, I, I feel like this is the culmination of, of my, my design aesthetic as it's developed over the years. And it, it, it brings so many things to the table for Savage Worlds players, not just Freedom Squadron people, but Savage Worlds players across the board. And quite frankly, easily exportable to other systems. As I, I told you guys off camera, uh, there's like five different Shadowrun GMs I know of who said, no, no, you've just shown me how to do Shadowrun without it bogging down into all that crap. <clears throat> and I've even gotten some back channel that uh, there may be some people at Catalyst who might be interested in seeing a version of that. So that's become something that we might export into some, some other stuff. So the idea behind plans and operations, and it takes... One of my one of my specialties is to to take the core rules of Savage Worlds and layer in ideas that still work seamlessly with your expectations of how that game plays. So it's not like patching something in that just weirdly messes with the rules, right? This is basically dramatic tasks right out of the core rule book, cooperative roles right out of the core rule book, and a couple of other ideas, and just structuring it into a new system, a structured system that a helps you do those cool planning sessions that you know that you see in the movies but it never works that way at the game table because let's face it it's not scripted at the game table and nobody's actually a tactical genius so you end up with one or two alpha players arguing for like an hour over no 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 we'll go in that world no 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 we'll go in that way and then and everybody else is like can we just get on with it where's the cheetos you right. know that was that yes. was always kind of and it didn't matter fantasy sci-fi modern day didn't matter the planning session always broke down into hey, and it hey, never matter because you were never going to follow the plan anyway Every game. Yep. Every game. Every so game. <laughs> this, it's like you've played with us. This right. completely this this system completely subverts that. It throws it out the window. Instead, the planning session becomes a series of challenges based on cards put on the table. Tactical, technical, interaction, covert. And it gives you a, a, an idea of you know what has to be done to solve that kind of thing. And uh, the challenge becomes part of the planning. So we have a technical challenge. All right. That means we're to get through this. Somebody's going to do something within the technical field. And then, you know, maybe he has to have somebody back him up. Somebody else is going to be the face character. will handle our interaction challenge. Whoever the person's really good at crawling through the air ducts and breaking electronic security, they're going to be the one to take the lead on the covert challenge. So the cards structure that process and it gives focus to it. And, and at the same time, it stimulates the imagination without everybody just sort of having to invent whatever it is is going to happen, right? And it, 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 it structures it and it engages everyone. Everyone's involved in the conversation. There's a puzzle and a problem solving element to it. And if it's a particularly difficult challenge, then they have to figure out, okay, so the covert character, you know, our, our ninja is going to take lead, but I'm going to go ahead and have our, our couple of combat uh, experts back them up because this is a really hard challenge, um, and, and so on and so forth. Because, uh, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys right here on the, this card. That's a covert challenge, right? And mm -hmm. we have cool art for it and everything like that. And it shows you what skills on the card, so it makes it really easy. All right, who has, you know, who, who has to take lead on that? It has to be somebody who's good at one of those listed skills. And then it has a condition. Now, this one says interference, so all the roles are made at minus two. So who... What the heck is that? Is that me or is that you guys? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's my my software. It my software did a it did a glitch, but I think we're we're good. Okay, we're good. Okay. No, my software. Well, no, no, it's all good. Okay. I just yeah. want to make sure it wasn't me. Yeah, no, um, no, it's so, me this time. So you might have three cards right on a table, and the t there's like six players, and they have to figure out who's going to solve each challenge, and they have to split up, right? They can't gang up on that and then do that one. It's all done at the same time. And what happens is the lead character has to ha use one of the skills listed on the card. If you're the backup character, if you're a support character, you can use any skill. So it may be that I have to use my stealth to solve this, but my buddy who's a sniper is going to use their shooting as the cooperative role to give me bonuses to fulfill the mission. So what happens is it means the covert character gets to be spotlighted or the interaction character, the face character gets to be spotlighted or the I'm a technical whiz and I get to have my spotlight solving the challenge. But the guy who's the, the uh, combat character isn't left going, well, you know, you guys get your spotlight. I'll go look at my phone for a while. No, they're involved. They have a role to play. It's like they, they get to do stuff. So the problem, there's the puzzle and the problem solving element to this, but there's also the role play. And this is the other part that I did not anticipate when I first designed this, but as it evolved, 
I realized I was also adding player driven narrative. Mm -hmm. Basically, as Shane Hensley said, I got fate all over his Savage Worlds and it works. <laughs> ah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so the point is you solve the covert challenge, right? And right. the GM sets a premise. And the typical example I use is, you know, around the world, various computer operated machines, ve you know, vehicles and cranes and stuff like that, anything that has computer chips in it, it started going crazy and causing damage and chaos and stuff like that. Obviously, Venom has done something. You guys have got to get out there and find out what and stop it. And that's it. That's the premise of the mission. It's a global operation at that point. The players figure out who's going to solve a covert challenge or who figures who's going to solve a, a, a technical challenge. And they do the problem solve. But then they get to tell the story about what they did. So when we solve the covert, covert challenge, they, may, you know, they, they get to say, well, you know what? Uh, we went to uh, an electronics plant uh, somewhere in the Pacific Rim. And, you know, it turns out it's, you know, been subverted by Venom. So I'm sneaking in to steal some of these chips and find out what's going on with these chips. And the sniper guy says, yeah, so I'm outside and you know, giving them cover as they sneak into the thing. And they get to say, but some Venom ninjas have shown up. So I'm going to, you know, take them out yeah. before they get in and get after my covert specialist. They get to decide that if they want. Now, if they freeze up and they're like, I don't know what, then the GM can step in and go, right. Well, let me give you the suggestion. But what I've discovered is after like the first card, once they realize, oh, I get to tell the story, I get to say yeah. what I did and how cool I was. It's my scene in the movie. Boom. At that point, you just sit back as a GM and everyone's taking each of these cards and they're like travel. It's a travelogue. God. They're going all over the world. They're going into all these cool buildings or jungles or whatever. I mean, I ended up one time with this cargo plane on fire with a sniper on top of the thing. They'd strap themselves down with duct tape. They're taking out mutant bikers in the Australian desert while the other team solving a completely different challenge is showing up with a, a, a fuel truck, which they basically set the detonated to blow up like a rolling explosive. I didn't plan Australia at all. I didn't plan any mutant bikers at all. That was all player driven. And I just changed the boss fight so that we were in Australia and I threw some mutant bikers in to make it, you know, f follow the story. And it was perfect. It all came from the players. That's another beautiful part of this. It gives players spotlights of the skills that they want to be specialized in outside of combat without leaving other players out when they get that specialization. It uh, empowers the players to tell the story they want to tell and get to describe the cool scenes in the movie they want to have. And they can do all of that stuff. And it's also quick and easy, right? It, you can have all of these challenges and all these cool scenes and still have plenty of time for a tactical boss battle at the end of the game session. Nice. I, I think Karen said it best when she said it, she loves how the players can use their skills and make that make sense uh, that they have it, but they get to use those in regular gameplay. And I think that's the key thing is that um, it, it, it doesn't force, it, it encourages uh, these players to use their imagination. And that's all what we do in role-playing anyway, but it's the opposite of feeling confined. And I think that's just the most amazing part of this mechanic. I appreciate that. We've, yeah. we've got a couple of videos out there that give you full tutorials if you want them more expanded. And there's also a fully written example of play that we posted out there uh, on the Kickstarter <laughs> and elsewhere that really brings it, to, to brings it together. If you read the dialogue and you read that example of play, you will totally get how this works. Yeah, I, yeah. Can, dude, I cannot tell you how many times I have made up a character and, and trying to be creative and make up a, a, a fun and realistic character, you know, play the medic or whatever. And and you're right, because you sacrifice on all these other mm -hmm. skills and things, you know, I'm not the big, uh, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the big uh, combat machine in the party. Uh, so you wind up getting sidelined almost all the time because that's what, you know, that's what most of the yep. action happens. And then, oh, make your medical roll. Okay, I made it. All right, well, we don't need you anymore. You're done for the, exactly. the whole adventure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. That is exactly that the two problems. You just named one of the two problems I was desperately wanting to solve with this. One was that you get the one time to make a computer's role or the one time to make a persuasion role or the one time to get to step up and go, I'm the face or I'm the medic or I'm the whatever. And then that's it. The rest of the game session and for multiple game sessions, that thing that was supposed to make you special barely comes into play. Or it's the other side. All right, we're going to have a computer hacking scene or we're going to have a, a interaction scene, a, a persuasion, you know, role play scene, and you're on you're on stage now. You get lots of time, but everybody else is left out, 
right? Everybody else, including the combat guys, they're all going, mm -hmm, whatever. Right. And so this solves both of those because you're getting the scene to be the medic and do the cool medical stuff and explain how you're using your pathology skills and you're your, your studying the disease or whatever's going on. But we look over to, to your buddy who's the you know martial artist guy. And he's like, okay, so while he's in there, you know, studying the bodies and trying to make sure we get the information we need, uh, Venom's sending a bunch of troops and they're trying to break in there and stop him and I'm taking him out. And he gets to describe a cool moment where he's Jackie Channing all over them and his right. role supports your role and both of you get to be awesome, but you solved the technical challenge at that point, which means that was your moment to really move the story forward. Right, right, fantastic. All right, so I think Mike, Mike has pulled up the Kickstarter. Yes, I, you know, I'm going to start at the top and then we can work our way down and, and kind of retouch again on some of the um, operations stuff. All right. But uh, is, are we looking good in um, in in yeah. focus? Yeah. Okay, good. it looks good. All right. Let me hit the top um, so we can see. Yes, we are definitely a 20,000. 20, Woo! Great. Doggy. I, I mean, to fund in six hours, first of all. I mean, that is like amazing. My, my hat off to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. That was exciting for us. Trust me. We yeah. funded while I was running the big game at Andocon. That was awesome. <laughs> nice. All right. So there's a lot of videos to be seen on this page and a lot of education that you can get about what um, Freedom Squadron and more importantly, the um, operations manual is going to be like. So yeah. So real quick, I want to I want to point out something. If you look right there on that cover, you see right there in the foreground, uh, that woman is Indian. Right. And in the background, you've got a black guy from, uh, I believe, Chicago, if I'm not mistaken, or if I remember correctly. And mm -hmm. if you look through all of our art, you're going to notice one. We actually have, I believe, equal to or more women than men as as notable characters, both on the good guy and the bad guy side. Uh, and we are very, very multinational. This is a global operations force. This is this is people from all over the world. Uh, and, and so, you know, lots of ethnicities and uh, lots of nationalities represented in this. I, I'm, I'm, I don't I say this unapologetically. This is a very progressive version of this idea. Excellent. This, this is this is everyone around the world is is engaged in in, in saving the world from the enemy, and uh, it doesn't matter you know what your belief system is. It doesn't matter you know what your orientations are. All that matters is that you want to step up and be a hero and save the world. And we exemplify that in all of the art and all the presentations. And I'm very proud of that. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. So onward through. I'm sorry. Onward. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Mike. All right. Here we go. Going down. Uh, and I'm just going to scroll. You guys feel free to talk, make some comments. Yeah, that's the friends and foes uh, picture. We actually put that at the top to exemplify just what I was talking about. You know, the, the multinationalism and the, you know, lots of women and men and stuff like that. So excellent. That's a cool, that's a really cool picture, by the way. That, that is, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's Corinne's character in the purple there, the, the surgical strike. And yes, that is her code name, surgical strike. That's I okay. thought that was really cool. Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, do we want to, while we're hitting this, we want to hit the, um, the pledges. Yeah, let's, hit, let's hit the pledges. What, so, so walk us through the pledges real quick. So you got the, the digital. Right. So there's digital. the digital player and that's basically the commandos manual and stuff like that. And uh, any stretch goals that get hit for $15, you're going to get a digital version of everything. That is huge, right? It's a bunch of free books basically. Mm -hmm. Hey, so and I'll tell you what, it really helps Sean out. If you, if you do the digital, if, if you're not thinking of anything else, because that's no extra money out of his pocket. It helps him. Uh, that helps him a lot. No, no, it does because you don't you don't it, have to make anything extra does, for that. You are getting a crap ton of stuff for fifteen dollars. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. I've done that before. So for the uh, the Seven C uh, uh, the reboot, I did the uh, digital, and I just keep getting stuff. It's awesome. Right, right. So you get all the you you get everything that we unlock as stretch goals. You get that for fifteen bucks. All right, so, going down, Mike. Was, was, there's the merchant one. Now that's a special thing that we're doing. I want to. I don't want to delve too far into that. But if there's anybody who's within the retail uh, side of things, do look into that because we are arguably one of the most um, retail-facing Kickstarters in in RPG history. And I mean that sincerely. I did not think we could pull off what we've done, but I'm pretty excited about it. John Stevens, who's on the Gamma uh, retail board is a partner in this. He's helped us. He, he runs Total Escape Games. He's, he's one of the Gamma retailers. Uh, he, he helped us structure this so that uh, retailers don't like dumping $500 that they don't see for another year and a half anything out of. 
But for $15, you just kind of lock yourself in once we establish that you really are a legitimate retailer. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can go in later and through the, the various mechanisms of, of, of how we do the, the backer kit stuff or whatever, uh, you can then add in and, and expand out what you want. But what it means is you get access to all this stuff via retail channels. And we have set it up so that you can get you, right off the bat, you get an exclusive GM screen and an exclusive GM screen adventure. Uh, which, if I remember correctly, Eddie Webb of, of Onyx Path fame and Pugmire fame is going to be the, the, the author of that. Um, so that's a, a pretty kicking thing. And if we unlock it, the retailers get exclusive premiere of the Occult Operations Manual. So that means it'll be on the shelves in retail stores before mm. anybody else gets access to it. Uh, for oh, I think it's, I think we I think we set like six to eight months or something like that. So they'll have a number of months when it's exclusive to their store. So it really supports them by getting fans into the store to buy stuff. And so this is a thing that we're doing that that you've not seen a lot of in other other RPG Kickstarters, which is a low buy-in point for the retailer combined with exclusives that really drive traffic to their stores. Cool. So now we got to get into the important stuff. Where we're actually going to get books in our hand here as a as a player, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to get the uh, the printed player for thirty five, right, right, and uh, that's uh, all digital stretch goal items still happen. So you get a printed copy of the commander's manual, but you still got a digital version of the commander's manual and a digital version of all the stretch goals. Now I'm I'm a. a a game master so i'm more interested in uh everything we have to offer for the game master so that's now where we're hitting now at the 40 dollars level right right now that one was also specifically uh you know structured you will i mean now that's that's the digital gm so uh you get the commander's manual and you get the plans and operations manual which is the um the 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 essentially the gm's manual but it also really delves into the plans and operations rules um, you get a print ready PDF of the plans and operations cards and then mm -hmm. some other, mm -hmm. some of the other stretch goals for that. So, but I'm lazy. I don't want to print all this stuff out myself. I want it all ready for me. So what do you got? Well, now we talked mm -hmm. earlier about the, whether the plans and operations rules would translate for people who aren't necessarily, uh, fans of the particular type of genre. And I've already had a few people who are like, you know, I'm not really into this setting it's just not my style but those rules man that's what the plans and operations manual pledge is all about that is uh you know a soft cover of the plans and operations rules uh actual printed set of the plans and operations cards uh you also get the pdf uh and the and the and the, and the pdf of the cards in case you want more cards or whatever but that is specifically set up for someone who's like you know what i want to use this to run eldritch horror i want to use this to run my deadlands game when i want to do cool investigations in the horror before we get into the gunfight uh you know or their sci-fi game or their their interface zero yeah. or you know or, or whatever those is this is the savage worlds fan option for i want the plans and operations rules to run in lots of different savage world settings that's what we set that up for Pete, this is our group. This is what we right. need. Right. And then, yeah. then there's the next level up, which is the big buy-in. Or thus far, the big buy-in. I can tease out that there's going to be an even bigger pledge level once we unlock the Friends and Foes manual. But that uh, that $95 one, um, that's the, the big, all the stuff in print. Uh, so, you know, I want all the things uh, for my group. The plans and operations manual, I want a commandos manual, plus I want the PDS of everything. So that's that's what that one's for. It's like, I want to run Freedom Squadron and I want to have all the stuff to do it. Boom, that's the that's the one you want there. Hey, you know, yeah. you know who would like, hey, Mike, you know who would like this? Yeah. Who would really like this? Uh, Jay Libby would love this. He would love this. He he loves G.I. Joe uh, and this would, this would be fantastic. I don't, I'm not familiar with that. I don't okay. know what you're talking about. Anyway, he would love that. <laughs> and uh, Savage Worlds is a, is a really easy system to get into. It is a very, very oh, simple yeah. system to play. Um, it, it's like the number one game I like to run at conventions because it's so easy to run. But yeah. why it, Savage Worlds is an excellent question. It just popped up here. <laughs> So uh, the, the, the easy answer is because that's what I write and design, and I've been doing it for a while now, going back to the original Shrintar uh, Epic Fantasy rules and then you know Savage Rifts. So I know this system. Also, Savage Worlds, it's incredibly popular. It has a huge audience that it, it can reach. Uh, it fits my style very well. It is action cinema uh, mm -hmm. adventure. I mean, it really handles that style well, which is perfect for a setting like this. Um, it, it gives you the, the the sense of like cool guns and armor and stuff without bogging down in really overly intricate and too realistic crunchy rules. It's it's it still handles 
the basics of you know the you know, the action movie approach to cool machine guns and jumping over uh, ravines and, and 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 you know parkour up the walls and stuff like that. It handles all of that stuff really well without bogging down into complex and difficult resolutions to get there. Uh, it also handles all the weird stuff. Like if you want, you know, advanced technology is weird science. You want somebody to have psionic powers. You want somebody to have cool occult abilities. It handles those nicely and easily uh, for players. I mean, I teach this game. Uh, the people who sit down who've never gamed before, but they're excited. They see the art they want to play. And they decide they want to play a mystic. And I'm like, well, that's okay. And they've, within an hour, they're like experts. You know, like, they, they love their character and they know what they're doing because it just, it comes together so easily. So, you know, that's... Yeah. That's a thing. Now, I mentioned there's a special pledge that's not available yet. It doesn't become available until the Friends Foes manual is unlocked. That's the one people have been asking about. How do I get my own character added into the official canon and put in a book? Well, if we unlock Friends and Foes, or Friends slash Foes is what we're calling it, um, that will be a special high dollar pledge level that allows you to get a bunch of cool stuff and you get to add a character that gets statted up and gets art and everything added to the Friends Foes manual. Sweet. Excellent. So yeah. as we stop along our, our uh, trip down um, the Kickstarter, Kickstarter lane, Kickstarter lane yes. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say as we're stopping here, if you want to know true nuts and bolts and want to see uh, some gameplay of the plans and operations um, in actual use, Please watch these two videos, the Plans and Operations Part 1 and the Plans and Operations Part 2. You can get them from, you can, they're obviously accessible here on the uh, Kickstarter, as well as you can just go to uh, Facebook for the um, uh, Actually, you would find Freedom them Squadron. On well, you know, you would find those videos on our YouTube channel. The yes, Jeff right. You, our YouTube channel. you can also find them um, on uh, evilbeaglegames.com. Okay. There we go. There and go. Uh, I watched them today, and I, I, I got to tell you, like I being now that I'm very intimately familiar, I'm I really excited. I really think that this is a totally interesting new spin on um, role playing. It's not not that role playing is boring by any means, but this really adds something, uh, a new component. And uh, man, you nailed it. Thank so. you. Hey, Thank you hey, very, Mike, very much. Yes. Stop sharing it so we can see your face. <laughs> I don't want to. No, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> So, did we have any other? Did we? I, I know we we've run long because I yes. wanted you guys probably would. Um, I know you guys wanted to keep it, but I enjoyed talking to you. It's fun yeah. stuff. Is there any questions from the chat room that I can't see that you think we should answer real quick? There, let's see. Hold on. Uh, there was there was one a while ago, but that was that was about Star Wars, and, and it was Jonathan. He was asking about uh, uh, what materials did you help create for uh, for Star Wars? But um, oh yeah, well no, you know, it, I I was. I was involved with the Kraken's uh, field guide uh, back in the original West End games. And uh, then I got brought in. I worked on both Edge of the Empire uh, and did a bunch of background information for that. I mean, just all over the map on that one. And for Age of Rebellion, uh, I'm very proud to say I was the guy who got to define a lot of stuff about the Carillion sector, which is where you know Han Solo's from and Wedge Antilles is from. And those were two of my favorite characters in the setting. So getting to write about their home sector and really define the canon of those of those areas that was exciting for me so boom there you right. go and michael knight said uh he's, he's he had mentioned a little while back he said yeah me and kit no longer speak he blames me for the show ending so that was <laughs> <laughs> uh, i blame hasselhoff right the hoff all right so yeah we are running a little bit long but let, let's cover i want to cover just a couple more things before we go uh things sure. i thought were important i noticed that this is very state-of-the-art so you you're actually up to date, even with the latest Flash Gordon that just went out, you're staying up to date on the latest Savage World. This is cutting edge, and and you haven't, you're not going back in time to oh no, up until this issue or this episode yeah. or this supplement. I'm a, I'm 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 in a very advantageous position, and I admit this thoroughly. I am very very good friends with Shane Hensley, and I am the brand manager for the Savage Rifts product line for Pinnacle. So you might assume <laughs> I have some access because of right. that. Uh, I'm not I'm not talking out of school. There's a lot of stuff that's going on with what they refer to as Savage Worlds Black that is uh, that that is not set in stone. And so therefore, I'm not going to you know get into revealing anything that that isn't appropriate. But I did rely very heavily on uh, Flash Gordon to give you some guidances. And because of the way Flash Gordon was structured, 
uh, you will see uh, in the occult operations manual, for example, we're going to work with the updated powers rules and stuff like that. Uh, more to the point, the changes in skills, right? The, the fact that athletics now replaces and, and combines climbing, uh, swimming, and uh, throwing. Oh, good. Uh, okay. And uh, you know, we got into there's you know there, there's a there's a battle skill instead of knowledge battle. There's a computer skill instead of knowledge computers. And really, I just phase knowledge out completely. Now that may not be what they finally decide to do in Core Savage Worlds. So let me be clear about this. But I decided, based on the way they sort of diminished the concept of the focused knowledge skill, and instead said just call it this. And it's a pro whatever it's appropriate to the setting. So if you need computers for your setting, you call it computers, and so on and so forth. Uh, but then I created a concept, and and this is one of the updates out there. It's called skill focus, as you can read it right there. It's it's public, so anybody can read it. But it takes the idea of I have the science skill, but I could take a focus in nuclear physics, and the focus would give me a plus one whenever I roll my science skill, and I'm dealing with nuclear physics. Or oh. if I get if I have uh, athletics and I take a focus in throwing. It gives me a plus one when I'm throwing with my athletic skill. And uh, there's a performance skill, but say I take a focus in guitar. So whenever I'm playing a guitar, I get a plus one when playing guitars with my performance skill and so on and so forth. So the, the focus skills is a way to go. And Shane knows I came up with this. So you know, he might decide that's a cool way to go. or He may go someplace else. But that really works well for the for the the, the Freedom Squadron thing. And so that's that's where we went with that. And then there's just a number of other things that are, are, are floating in there. This is as up to date as can possibly be with what we know about Savage Worlds rules today. Fantastic. I got to tell you, I'm just hearing that at combining all those skills into athletics is I, I think that is fantastic because, yes. you know, <clears throat> you had to skill me. I think I, I remember correctly. I haven't played French. I haven't played Savage World. Sorry, Savage Worlds in a little while. But yeah, I remember the melee was a skill, right? It wasn't like fighting. swords and axes there's, and stuff like that. And it, and it covers there's everything. There's fighting and there's shooting. Yeah. So now, now there's fighting, shooting, and if you want to throw something, athletics. Right. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. So correct me if I'm wrong. There's you got some new edges even added in. Oh yeah. There's a bunch of cool new edges in there. Uh, zone specialist, which is a callback to the board game because they have zones and then there's zone specific abilities on the cards. And I wanted to, to take that feeling because it was a really cool idea to have the Arctic specialist be special in Arctic weather, the desert you know guy be special in desert, the mountain person and so on. So I, I took that idea and I created zone specialist, which also solved another problem. There's two skills that are, are commonly you look at them in the skills list and you go, this sounds really cool. And it seems like my character should have it. And then you play for a while and you're like, why do I never really ever get to use this skill very much? Uh, survival and investigation are the two skills that I have sort of encountered that sort of like, it's good to have it, but it doesn't really come out very much. So I took survival and tied that to zone specialist. So zone specialist basically is if I'm an Arctic zone specialist, that means how, you know, the higher my, my survival skill is, the more benefits I get whenever we are in that zone. And if I have a high enough survival skill, not only am I have a survival expert, but I'm automatically giving benefits to my teammates. They're, they're getting benefits and bonuses. They're, they're having an easier time surviving the hazards of an Arctic zone or the hazards of a jungle zone because I'm their specialist and I'm there with them and helping them out. Uh, investigation, by the way, the th you, you know I said the four types of cards before, tactical, interaction, uh, technical, and covert. Three of those, uh, you know, not tactical, but interaction, covert, and technical, you can use your investigation skill to, to, to solve those challenges. So suddenly the investigator becomes the superstar in solving three of the four types of challenges. So those, those are two things. There's a strange DNA uh, edge, which I sort of did as an afterthought. But you now players have encountered that and they love it. They just love the idea of I can take strange DNA. It basically takes their human character, but they get to add in a couple of things from the, the race tables, the race creation tables. Oh, wow. Like they can give themselves, you know, thermal vision or they can give themselves gills or they can give themselves, you know, some sort of special ability that that represents that their DNA got messed with in some way. Um, hmm. I have taken my own approach to martial arts in this because it feels like if you're going to have ninjas and, and, and combat experts, maybe have some martial arts stuff. So I created an edge called fighting style. Uh, I'm actually going to do that as an update here uh, as a content update for, for the Kickstarter soon. And so people should keep an eye on that. I'll tease it now, but watch the Kickstarter and Hey, you know, maybe pledge to the Kickstarter so you can see this. Uh, but basically I, I came up with the concept of the broad, there's the, 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 the accurate style, the fast style, the power style. You get to say what that is, right? If it's, you know, Aikido or judo or whatever you want to say, but you take that style and it gives you, 
certain uh, benefits uh, based on fighting in that style. So we've actually added a Savage Worlds martial arts element to to Savage Worlds through that. And there's a bunch of other edges that are very much keen on the, I am a cool dude with a, uh, with a code name and a neat outfit, and I'm a specialist at these badass things. Cool. So there's, cool. there's a bunch of edges that go into that. Also, another thing, that, and this goes to something that Shane Hensley said. He, he, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the testimonials, but uh, Shane actually mm-hmm. wrote something that's amazing. Um, and uh, he, he uh, I'm just going to say it. So Savage Worlds mm-hmm. was created to handle the kinds of games I often like to play and run. You could be a badass fighter or wizard or whatever, but you can also be a leader a planner. I'm proud of how the game accommodates that. And my friend, Sean Patrick Fannin has added even more to it in freedom squadron. I had a blast in the plans and operations phase, riffing on the other players, figuring out how to best use our individual character skills, and then watching it all to come together in the adventures that followed. Sean isn't afraid of big games and big ideas. And this may be his best yet. Can't wait to back by and run it myself. Now, boom, that was a mic drop. But the thing is, (laughs) yes, it was another thing that I went out of my way with the design on this. There's a, a thing called uh, operational planning and it's a, it's an edge you can take as a leader. It's part of the leadership uh, track. And there's a bunch of other command special abilities. You can roll on special charts and stuff. All these get into uh, as a leader, I, the player don't have to be a strategic expert. I, the player don't have to understand tactics. I, the player don't have to have the ability to like, you know, throw my leadership awesomeness at my players and have them feel like I'm overwhelming them. But I can have these cool abstract abilities that represent that my character is a logistics expert or a command expert or whatever. And so when we're doing plans and operations, I can replace bad cards with better cards or I can, I can make a role that gives everybody a bonus across the board because of my communication across, you know, the, the thing and, and enhance everybody's ability to succeed. So this system really supports the player's ability to feel like they are a leader helping their team with their leadership without having to necessarily have gone to West Point or something to do that. Ah, right. Excellent. Fantastic. Fantastic. Have you saved drown proofing? Has has drown proofing been revolutionized? That's what I want to know because every nobody takes it. I mean, like swimming. Yeah, the skill, swimming skill. Yeah. Well, that'd be well, athletics, the fact, right? The fact that you now you know have athletics, which there's nobody going to play this game that doesn't take athletics. Now everybody can swim. Right. <laughs> so no, that's he, he drown proofed everybody. Right yes. Yeah, pretty much. All right. And then actually in the character creation rules, it does say by the time you're done building your character, you must have these minimum skills because you can't go into the field. And thus you've been trained. So we just established right. that you're going to get a lot of them based on which vocation framework you take or which specialization roles you roll. So you go through that process and then you look at it and go, okay, I still don't have a high enough. Uh, I don't have any healing. So I'll have to go ahead and take my healing up. So you have to meet certain minimum requirements and that's just a, a, a setting rule thing. So, so vacation frameworks, that's sort of like a, a sort of a, a life pathy type of thing where I, this is what I do. So these are the things that I, I would have doing those things kind of like a class, but not like, not as restrictive or as, or as, uh, as, as shoehorning as a class is. So via my work on Savage Rifts, which, you know, the, the iconic frameworks were a necessary way to create those starting, oh my God, packages of superpowers and abilities. Uh, that represented what a glitter boy had to be, what a juicer had to be, what a, a, a ley line walker had to be. So we had to create those set, oh my, you know, uber powered things. On and I just I came up with the idea, and with Ross Watson's help, you know, back then we we came up with the idea of yeah, you have your we don't change character creation in terms of the core idea of Savage Worlds. You have five stat points, you have fifteen skill points, you choose some hindrances. None of that ever changes in any of the stuff that I've done. It's just we layer on top of that the starting things that that character has to have. Now in, in the Savage Rifts, this is post-apocalyptic superhero, so it's crazy over the top, ridiculous power levels. But the idea really rang true with a lot of people. I've had a number of publishers and a number of creators go, can I steal that and like narrow it down a little bit for, for my setting, for all these cool concepts? And then there was also the special specialization tables, the hero's journey tables, which had these random results. And this was Shane's inf- influence. He was like, I, I like random tables. Let's see if we can put those back into the game if, you know, via this thing. So what we discovered over this process, and this is something that I kind of tapped into, is people love the, 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 the positives of the concept of class or archetype or whatever. Right if they don't have to suffer the restrictions thereof. Right. They love the, the, the fun of random roles as long as they don't have to suffer the crap of a crap role, right? right. So yeah. random, random character generation where you could get a good or a bad role, that sucks because you don't know if you're going to get something good. Class that says you must be this and there's no expansion from that, that's not fun. But if I still have my point-based 
I get to decide what my core build is, but I layer on top of it something that enhances the role that I want to fulfill in the team. Boom, suddenly you get the fun of class without the restrictions. So I'm a pilot. That means I'm gonna start with a certain number of things that represent that I'm a pilot and that's my role in the team. But that's on top of, I take, I still take the hindrances I want. I still build out the skills I want. I get to roll on other charts. So if I want to be a black ops specialist who also happens to be a pilot, I can make that choice versus the other person who decides they want to be a pilot as well. And they focus really heavily on the aviation because they want to be Maverick, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So that's where the vocation framework translates out of the iconic frameworks. Uh, and yes, people are like, well, God, that just makes these characters really powerful. Well, yes, that's what I specialize in. I specialize right. in the big over the top characters and the premise supports that you are not uh, uh, uh out of boot i don't know what i'm doing and i'm in freedom squadron freedom squadron recruits the best of the best from around the world you were already doing awesome things and they brought you in that premise is there so you were already a great pilot or a great soldier or a great special agent or spy or ninja or whatever so you start with these essential this is what i was doing before i joined freedom squadron now i'm zero point but that zero experience point is I'm a zero experience point novice as far as Freedom Squadron is concerned. And now we go forward from here. So the, the vocation framework is that layer on. And you could do an even less powerful version of that if you want, if somebody was going to design. And I've got back channel publishers talking to me about this constantly now. Everybody wants to, to take this idea and run with it because they like the idea of supporting their setting, saying, in my setting, these types of characters make sense. So I don't want to use D20. But I like the idea of what the classes sort of do, where they focus players' attention on the types of roles that make sense for the setting. Suddenly, right. the vocation framework sort of supports that. And players like the idea of, say we're three different soldiers, if we all make different roles on these cool charts, my soldier may be a machine gunner, your soldier may be much more of a, you know, I'm very, very tough and I'm a bullet, you know, radar kind of guy, and so on and so forth. So you know, there's still the, the random charts add an additional level of flavor and fun. All right. All right. Well, hey, let's let's wrap this. I got one more thing. Well, two two things. One, one's really quick, um, uh, but the other one is you're doing fulfillment through Drive Through RPG. Now, I have I haven't I saw some like hints about our, our Drive Through doing fulfillment. Um, so you're not you're not going the the what everybody seems to do with China and all that. Uh, you're, you're actually going just straight through Drive Throughs handling all your fulfillment. So just give me real quick what what does that mean for fulfillment for you? Well, it simplifies things tremendously. And I'm very, very good friends with drive through. You guys had really, I used to work for him. I was the, okay. the yep. communications and marketing guy for drive through RPG. So I clearly have established relationship, but really most of the companies in the industry have good relationship with drive through because they're an amazing company to work with, to get stuff done. Now I will say this, if we end up in a situation where suddenly our need to print reaches like 2000 books or 5,000 books or some craziness like that, suddenly you, we do at that point need to consider a print run and that would be an offset print run separately that's but that's a different issue that's that's going to depend we're we're currently we had alliance and other distributors approach us about this product line so we have a real demand developing for brick and mortar that will probably be a separate consideration but for the backer the individual backer who's coming to us through this kickstarter and they want their books yeah pod because i'm very pleased with the, the, the print quality uh, that we're going to get out of uh, the print on demand and it just simplifies things because they can deliver those pdfs for us immediately and that means that the the, the person who gets the pdf has it permanently in their drive through rpg library automatically right mm -hmm. so they, it just makes it so much faster and easier uh, you know, it doesn't cost us anything, but they're, and they're happy to have it. And that means it's automatically then available on drive through RPG when we open it up for the average customer to buy immediately from there. And they can immediately, they can order a book PDF, or they can order a print on demand version. And all that stuff's already set up and ready to go for when we get to that point in the product lines, uh, uh, life lifeline. And if we do additional products that aren't part of the Kickstarter, all that flows nicely into the product line from there. And we're already set up for all that. So drive through is just sort of it, it it's it's a sort of no-brainer default i know there's other companies that like to do different, different things but it's just a no-brainer and the customer service and totally going to brag on my my beloved corinne she works as customer service for drive through they're the they're they're bar none the tech the technical guys are fantastic the customer service ties are fantastic and they handle all that for me so i don't have to worry about it so it's a built-in solution across multiple needs and no yeah, shipping hey. containers get quarantined right exactly <laughs> that i'm not <laughs> Just uh, saying, true. Just I'm not, saying. I'm not. I'm not saying. Well, it's on a slow boat from China. Sorry, we're five months late, right? It's just <laughs> right. not a. That's not a thing. I mean, yeah, and, and, and it's yeah, been known to happen. 
And everybody I've talked to about uh, the Chinese ship, it's like, whatever you think it's going to take, just double that. If they say it's going to be two months, it's going to be four. You know? That's, right. That's, at a minimum. At a minimum. Yeah. We even right. had a problem with that with the uh, I mean, Pinnacle's got this stuff down to a science. And, you know, they always have to worry about that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing. And, right. you know, political environment being what it is, I don't necessarily want to count on anything coming over from the Pacific Rim right now. That's, I'm yeah, sorry. You, just... never, you, you never know when a, all of a sudden a tariff is going to tank every bit of your profit into the, you know, in, into the yeah. bottom of the Pacific. Or, or, a, or a very angry uh, Korea guy decides to set you know, nuclear glow across the, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just saying this is we work. We, we looked at our options and that was the one that works for us. OK, cool. So, so, so last thing and just real quick. Tell me about Project Awesome. Project Awesome. So uh, this is obviously a callback to the wonderful 80s and 90s cartoons uh, of, you know, particular costume or particular cool uniform wearing gun toting, you know, real heroes against bad guy, evil team. However, there's a lot of other source material that that we all can kind of look back and remember fondly. Uh, just type in 80s cartoons on YouTube and go nuts, right? So Project Awesome is meant to to take us through all of that in an interconnected way see the venom assault guys are the swag guys are actually trying on doing other board games and and supplements that are compatible with the core venom assault board game experience that are going to involve things like oh i don't know the robotrons which were mentioned in the source material both for venom assault and they're actually mentioned in the timeline for uh venom for uh, freedom squadron and those are transforming robot guys so you can imagine there's robotrons and robocons right um <laughs> and uh a lot of us remember the the days of uh you know mythical uh uh anthropomorphic uh you know f- you know uh, animal people with cool swords shouting really cool catchphrases and uh, uh sounds familiar you know, sounds outer familiar. space one of my favorites uh, might involve some uh, space cowboys on robot horses oh, uh, yes. with, with really cool rock and roll openings. Uh, yes. that if you watch the cartoons, you go, oh, my God, that hurts. But if you think about how you might update that and make it cooler, you right. know, that kind of thing. And we're, But we're going to tie it all into the same continuity, right? So we're going to make it where all of those things exist, but they're in the same continuity. So you can, like, bring all of that stuff in and, like, one person's playing a Freedom Squadron soldier and another person's playing a Robotron and so on and so forth. So eventually you should be able to do all that in the same setting nice nice all right well hey uh let's give out some links here so <clears throat> if you're if you're actually on the kickstarter page and watching this video you don't need these links because you're already there uh but if you're not if you're watching say on our youtube channel or you're watching us on facebook or whatever uh make sure you go to kickstarter.com and just do in the search bar type in freedom squadron uh It'll come up. It's the first, it, it'll pretty much be the only thing that comes up for that. Uh, there is a short link. It's uh, k- k- kck.st forward slash 2o, little o, p-c-z-c-i. Uh, there's a bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Freedom Squadron. Um, that's, that's that the one you made, Mike? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Which, then, thank uh, you very much, Mike, yes. for that. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. I mean, it sounds a little bit easier than 20P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that was our internal bit right. link for, you know, whatever. But right. that, that's right. a great one. Put that out there. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it works. And, uh, and and where else can we go? Where else can we check it out, uh, Sean? Well, um, so freedom, Facebook's been sort of the space to follow me on. There is a Freedom Squadron page, all kinds of awesome stuff going on there. If you want to get involved with the community, Freedom Squadron Global Operations Force, you're welcome to join us there. Uh, obviously, follow the Kickstarter page right now. EvilBeagleGames.com. That's, you know, we got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. I got three partners. We're doing some amazing stuff there. So check it out there. But there's a lot of stuff happening on there with Freedom Squadron and the rest of our product lines. So those are all great places to check us out. And also check out hashtags for uh, hashtag Freedom Squadron RPG. On, on Twitter. Twitter. Yep. And uh, again, you got to check out the, um, what is that? The World. Oh, God, it's not in front of me. The, the World Worldwide News World. Network. Thank you. WNN. Yes, because right. it is very highly entertaining. Oh, yeah. This all right, fun Sean. Stuff on well, thanks for joining us for the first episode of Kicking It with the Mythwits. Uh, we're glad to have you as our first yeah. guest, um, and we're, we're glad to pimp your project. It's really cool. I, I love it. It's, it's all G.I. Joe. Yo, it's not G.I. Joe. It's not G.I. Joe, but it's like it. It's like it. If you like G.I. Joe, you will love this. Thank you very much. And Hasbro, please don't sue us.
Right. No, it's not. There's nothing to sue. It's not. It's not Joe. I. Yeah. It's, a it's, not it's all good. It's all good. Sorry we went so long, guys, but I really enjoyed this. Oh, no, and, no, uh, no. It's perfect. Perfect timing. It's fantastic. And, and we'll see you guys on Monday. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, yes, definitely. So, so yeah, if you're watching this live, Sean's back. coming on Monday night, and we're going to talk we're gonna about. Play, we're going to play games and have Tom Fullery. Yes. And shenanigans. And shenanigans. And shenanigans. Absolutely. And uh, oh, hey. Irish folks, tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day, right? Sean Patrick Fennin. We're having what we call the Big Irish Blowout right here at the Silver Unicorn Pub. I've nice. got I've got uh, corned beef up in my fridge right now and a nice big head of cabbage. I love corned beef and cabbage. I, hey, I know it's kind of more of an American thing or whatever, but, you know. I'm, I got a bottle of Tullamore. I got a bottle of Tullamore Dew waiting there for me. So I'm half know. Irish, so I can do that. All right, everybody. Let's do the uh, Let's do the closer. All right, uh, you've just enjoyed kicking it with the Mythwits. Make sure to catch our regular live show on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Mythwits, much like they did in this uh, in this episode. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook and YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits. Check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher, or you can just listen at Mythwits.podbean.com. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media. Hey, share this one, Sean. He could use use all the helps. Uh, help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSR Podcast or TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Oh my god. Mythwits create a common product. Like it and share it. Just don't blow it up with your rocket pack. Um, and thanks everybody for checking this out and if you're actually watching the credits, then you don't then don't kid yourself. You want this game. Go back and share this puppy right now. All right, Sean. Good night. Thank you. For, for freedom. <laughs>